This is my daughter's room. Um, my daughter is now eight years old and she has not spent, uh, we, we, we divorced when she was about two or three. She's not spent the night in this room since she's been two or three. She's never slept in her bed or spent the night in this room. But it's her room. I keep it for her and um, it's her room. Fortunately, I've never been a holiday person. I don't even celebrate my birthday, you know, for no reason other than, you know, every day that I wake up is a birthday as far as I'm concerned. Um, so fortunately, because I don't have that, oh, it's Christmas, oh, it's Thanksgiving, oh, it's, I don't have that. So um, Father's Day is whatever it is. Meaning, yes, my sons, they're going to call me. Um, my mother, she's going to call me. My sisters, they're going to call me. Um, some of my bros will call me. Not all of them, but some of them will call me. Um, will my daughter call me? Now, yes. Because this past year, the fact that I've been able to be in her life, taking her to school every morning and having three days a week after school with her, we bonded. And, you know, um, Monday's my birthday, we're going to the aquarium. That's um, her, daddy, let's do something for your birthday. Okay, cool. Let's go to the aquarium. Been a DJ all my life. Um, I've owned, I, I owned the, the one, one of the most known record stores in the city of Atlanta for 15 years. You know, I'm someone, um, I was on the um, policy council for Early Head Start here in Georgia. Um, Early Head Start is now about probably four years old, four or five years old, but on, in its inception, I was on the policy council creating the policies and for the Early Head Start program. I have mentored um, young black males, Dr. C.T. Vivian um, Institute of Male Scholars. I mentored with him and, and other men, young African-American males, you know, from like eight, eight to 16, I think we did. I did that for like 12 years. I, a founder of an organization called Nation Time Syndicate, which was the Atlanta version of New York's Zulu Nation or the worldwide Zulu Nation. You know, I, I, I've met a lot of people in my life. And I think if you turned my tree upside down and shook it, you'd have a hard time shaking someone out of it that would have something bad to say about me. So for the entire first grade, I was not able to um, take my child to school, pick her up from school, nothing. She failed the first grade because um, I, 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 I would go to the school and do the, the, the pizza, um, because it was um COVID thing, the Zoom, whatever. I would have the meetings with her teachers and everything and just to see what's going on. And then when I got her report card, she failed the first grade, five apps. First grade, so, whoa, how you fail the first grade? Now, fortunately, you don't get left back in the first grade, but how you fail the first grade? And um, second grade, I was, I hate to use this word, but it is what, I was allowed to take her to school in the morning. That became quality time for me. I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're doing learning in the car going to school. I'm making, I, I make her breakfast for her. She's eating her breakfast in the car and we're doing learning things in the car on the way to school. And then I was also, I think maybe three days out the week, I would pick her up from school. Long story short, she just finished the second grade, 
AB honor roll. AB, I went from failing the first grade because I was nowhere allowed to be in her life to where I had partial or a portion accessibility to her AB honor roll. Entire year, both semesters. Her, her mother's Ghanaian. I traveled to Ghana. I'm um, building there and plan on retiring there and everything. And um, that's how I met her mother. And um, her mother was the first person I met in my travels to Ghana who was actually trying to get up out of there. And I mean, a lot of people are trying, but she actually was, had a passport and everything. So, you know, I admired that about her, that, you know, you got a vision to get out of here. So anyway, you know, we married there, um, did the visa thing, got her here, and um, we, had, we had a daughter. Within the first year of her being here, uh, my daughter was born. Um, yeah, it, but um, things just went left. This is my second divorce. My, my divorce from my first wife with the two sons. And, um, you know, obviously I, I, I've been in their life and I've, I've affected how they've become. My wife will tell you that I'm a fantastic father. She will, she will tell you that. And even my second wife <laughs> will tell you I'm a fantastic father, but the system doesn't care. And that's where the whole family dynamic gets convoluted is, um, it's, it's almost like in me going through this twice now, it's almost like, this might be a bad analogy, but I've looked at modern slavery, how we were, our family, they took the man from the family and broke up the family and everything. It's almost like the court system, instead of trying to peacefully cohabitate with the family and make things peaceful separation, or it's like they try to create more of a um, friction. You know, one, they're not about keeping the family together. They're, they're, they're more, uh, they feel, it feels like they're more focused on, you go in that corner, you go in that corner, you're going to make sure that that corner stays well and taken care of and you're gonna to have to figure out in, in your corner and the child is a dis, dis, like a, a disposable asset um, because nothing in my experience and that's all I can speak from but I know there's a lot of men who share this really puts the child first and that's my big problem is it's not about me it's not about the mother it's about the child fortunately I'm one of those fathers who fight and jump through all the hoops that are obstacles that are put in front of me to still be in my child's life. At, at whatever point in time, there's a window. I jump through the window. Um, is, that, is, is, is that fair? Is that how it should be? Is, is not having some structure, you know, um, parenting structure for a child good where it's just random? I mean, there, there was one point I, I went over a year without seeing my child, just because the mother kept kept her from me, and um, the system drags their ass, and there's no urgency for me. But I promise you, if I'd have been keeping that child from the mother, 48 hours, there would have been some change, probably in 24. If I tell you that you can go to this gas station and if you kick this gas pump three times, you'll get free gas and you'll get away with it, then you'll probably do that. And that's what the court system has told women that all they, can, all they have to do is come in and whether they lie or not, all you gotta do is show up and you'll get away with you know, whatever allegations you may have, or pretty much um, they'll give you more than what you wanted. My ex-wife didn't expect to get, didn't expect this to play out the way it did. She was just trying to get an upper hand on 
custody, on, on custody of the child. She'd have been cool with 50-50, 60-40. She'd have been cool with that as long as she was the primary custodial parent. But the system said, nah, nah, baby, I got you, boo. Got you. We're going to give you full control and give him, make him have to pay you to have full control and support you and everything. And you can determine when he sees his child. So again, you know, if you can, if you as a woman or in, in the gas, if you know you can get away with kicking the pump and getting free gas, or you as a woman know that you can go into the system and just tell whatever story you want to tell, and the system's going to just take it because you said it and um, cares less about the due diligence or, you know, the, 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 the factuality, if that's a word, of what you said. But just say, oh, you said it, then we'll make him accountable for it and we'll make the child suffer. She, she's having to exist in two different worlds. The world when she's with her mother is take the iPad, TV remote, watch TV, play. The world when she's with me, no iPad, no TV remote, let's learn. And she embraces the learning thing, especially now she's getting older. So it's, it's, it's even like when I know I'm not going to see her, like when, when she's leaving, I'll give her um, homework to do while she's gone from me because she's not going to do any homework other than that. And I have to, she, I have to teach her um, work ethic where you're constantly having to do work. You, you, you don't take breaks from learning. You don't get three days of playing. You don't get it. Not, not much. So that's what I'm even um, most recently, because we're in summertime now. And um, one day I, I forgot to write out homework for her. And I told her, I said, okay, you make your own homework. I need you to give me five addition, five subtraction, and... Um, write out as many states as you can and their abbreviations. You don't have to write all 50. If you get however many you can remember off the top of your head, write it and the abbreviations. And that's your assignment without me having to write it down. And she gets it and she embraces it. She even asked me the other day, like, Dad, you're not going to give me no work because I'm going to give you a break. So, you know, so she understands the difference between the life that she has here versus the life that she has here. And she's moving away from this where it's just about playing and everything because she loves learning. She likes, you know, I, I do a lot of um, handyman stuff. I, don't, I, I let her use the tools. You know, I teach her how to use the tools. I teach her how to, you know, grout and mud tile and, you know, mud sheetrock and sand sheetrock. And I teach her how to, she embraces it because it's all education, it's all learning. And that's what she gets from me. She doesn't get that anyplace else. She's eight now. She's not three no more. She doesn't understand. Well, daddy, why can't I sleep in my bed? <laughs> she, she doesn't understand that. So I feel like a sperm donor. Fortunately, I didn't have to pay alimony, but um, and a child support check. That's all I am as far as it doesn't respect father, fatherhood. It doesn't respect the, the importance that a father brings to his child. Um, doesn't have to, it's, it's, it's not even about, you know, if the, if the marriage or relationship didn't work, that's fine. We, we grown, we adults, we gotta move on past that emotional thing, but the focus needs to be on the child. And um, when the child's not having both parents, you know, I'm sure there's stats that say what happens to children w without, you know, both parents, um, you know, and um, I'm only optimistic because I know me. I know that I'm going to go a thousand percent hard in the paint for my for, for, for what's best for my child and my ch and my two sons are evidence of 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 how I am as a father, as a parent. So that's my optimism is that, like I said, um, 
I raised two sons that if 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 I if, if I left here to today she's in good hands. So um am I optimistic that she's going to be all that she could have been? No. She 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 missed Four years of learning and, and, and being, you know, um, ahead of the curb of her age group, because that's what I do. I'm teaching you, you know, addition, subtraction before school is. I'm teaching you how to the 50 states and how to spell them and the abbreviations and the seven continents. And we're looking at the globe and the map before school does. And I've just been able to do that this one year. The previous years, she's gotten none of that. So she's just been TV and um, iPad. So can she make that up? Am I optimistic about that? I want to be. Because it's very easy for a man to walk away. It's like too much. There's too much. You know, I, I'm supposed to see my child this uh, on Friday and Saturday, and you're not bringing my child Friday and Saturday. Um, police can't do nothing. I can't go back to court about it because that's more money and uh, time and everything. And after a while, it just gets to where it's just so easy to just be like, you know what? I can't do this no more. But again, I don't know any men who have done that, but I... It's almost like who is it? I understand, <laughs> you know. If, if if I want to be understand, I understand because you know it, it shouldn't be that hard to be a father to your child. It should be fifty fifty, not ninety ten. So when you when 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 I have 90 percent control of something, I can dictate. You know, if I if I if, if I got the refrigerator and I'm in control of it, you can't just get what you want when you want. I'm in control. No, 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 you can't. And that's what happens with the child when you give somebody 90% control of a child. It's like, no, nah, 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 we were going to go here. And the fact that it's my time to have the child, it doesn't matter because the system will not um, back me up. You know, it's one thing if, you know, it stood behind when a, when, a, when a mother doesn't adhere to the visitation and the system made her accountable for that. That doesn't level the playing field, but, it, 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 but we don't even have that. So we have nothing. So we're, 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 we're at the mercy of whenever it's convenient, oftentimes, for the, the, the mother to not have the child. And it's like, okay, can you come pick up the child? And it doesn't even have to be the court ordered time or anything. It's just what's convenient. And we gotta jump through those hoops. If you're not a strong minded, have a strong network, support network of people to hold you up and keep you focused and you know checking on you and knowing that you're going through stuff and that you know it, it's weighing on you, I can understand how you can just break and just say, uh, yo, I ain't got, what else I got? You took my family, you're taking all my money from me, court costs, child support, alimony, I can't make a living, I can't see my children, it's like, what else I got? I'm not that dude. You know, I'm, I'm, my, my, my family structure and my friend pool and just my whole support network is too strong for that, but everybody don't have that. You know, so, I'm, I'm good because of who I am and consciously knowing what can happen if I don't maintain my mind and my strength and my focus on the most important thing, which is my child. My child cannot prosper or benefit from me in jail or having done something to myself. That, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make my mind. She's already going through enough based on what has happened. I'm not going to make her life, you know, that more difficult. But, you know, 
I can see how people snap. The system has to change. There has to be, there has to be an inkling of common sense that realizes how antiquated and how unjust and how, how detrimental what this system is doing is to the child. I don't expect him to give a damn about me. It, it showed me don't give a damn about me. And obviously it gives a damn about the, the woman and that's fine. I can't control that, but damn, give a damn about the child. Give a damn about the child, man. That's, that, that, that's, you know, that's my only thing is it has to be some, it has to be someone who has seen enough of what's going on in uh, like, like judges. Are y'all really happy with the rulings that y'all make? <laughs> do do y'all really sleep good at night knowing that you just took this child's father away from them and I guess you do sleep good because you know you, you you ain't you ain't gotta look back and see what that child became five years from now. Maybe that child ends up in your court in ten years, you know, you're sentencing him for something that maybe could have been avoided if he had a father in his life. We're, we're men. We want to take our children and have an effect on how they grow and, and everything. When you castrate us like that, that's, that, that's, that's, that's hard for a man to handle. But, you know, these younger brothers coming up, you know, just, just be, I guess more important, just be careful where, where you lay your seed. You know, that's first and foremost. Just, just don't, don't, don't lay your seed anywhere because if you do that, then you have no control over anything that happens after that. You don't control the ability for the, the seed to come to term. And after that, you're, 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 you're down a, a long road unless you have good, um, a, a, a good fair-minded woman that believes and respects your parenting. It ain't about y'all. Y'all can go y'all separate ways, but make sure that the woman, the best that you can, respects the importance of you as a parent and as a man and as a father. Fathers are important to children. Fathers are necessary to children. It's got to be enough mentality and, and stats that they would care to look at that would say, wow, households without fathers, this happens. Households that have fathers, this happens. Wow. Makes sense that fathers need to be in, but they don't care. I think that they're just, you know, uh, so focused on the mother. The, the one who carried the child for nine months and um, bore the child. That that's who had, but all mothers ain't good mothers. You know, you'd be surprised how many fathers are better parents. I'm not talking about a father being a better mother, just like a mother can't be a better father. I'm talking about the parent that, you know, encompasses enough of both of them if you're gonna have one, you'd be surprised how many fathers are better parents. You know, a father's not gonna keep his child from the mother. We're not, we're not built like that, because we respect, this is your child too. And the, and, and, and the system's not gonna allow us to do that. <laughs> you know, the system's not gonna allow you, you know, so it's a double-edged sword there, but um, they're not gonna always be a child, they're, 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 they'll be, older one day and they'll do the math on, you know, what happened and, wow, dad, you, yeah, you, 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 yeah, I remember when you used to, you know, just pick me up just to drop me off and just in that little bit of time we would go eat and have ice cream and then you would give me the, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll remember that because, you know, she lets me know now some of the things that she, you know, remembers to, you know, it's funny cause she asks me, you know, these questions now. 
And I say to her, you're not old enough for me to have that conversation with you. But when she's old enough, I will, because it's all about the truth. And maybe she'll ask her mother the same thing and have a conversation with her. Probably get two different stories. But somewhere in there, we'll lie the truth, and you know, she'll have to, you know, um, do what she chooses with that truth. Um, Father's Day, you know, I'll probably, she'll probably be with me. I don't know, she'll probably be with me on Father's Day. Has she been with me on a Father's Day up until now? No. No. Not unless, no, 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 she hasn't. We've never spent a Father's Day together. It, in the past five years since this court thing. <laughs>